Good evening and welcome to A Closer Look. In this episode, we feature the launching of the Sago Nursery and Processing Pilot Project at Moim Village in East Sipik Province. This project is being spearheaded by the Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO. Volatile weather causes droughts and increases food insecurity. Papua New Guinea faces unpredictable climate catastrophes, thus it is important to have projects and programs that aim to ensure PNG is food secured. The Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, is one organization that is carrying out programs in the country in collaboration with relevant stakeholders to ensure food security in the country is guaranteed. FAO recently launched its Sago Nursery and Processing Pilot Project at the Moim Village in East Sipik Province. FAO PNG Head of Office Mr. Bir Mandal during the launching ceremony at Moim Village spoke about FAO's aim in ensuring there is food security as well as combating climate change as this is one main factor causing food insecurity in Papua New Guinea. Fair assistance to PNG has aimed at achieving food security through environmentally sustainable local food production. Recent interventions have focused on strengthening the policy and planning, including the development of National Agriculture Development Plan. As a small island, Developing a state adaptation to the climate change and disaster risk management are important features of the cooperation. A FAO's assistance in Papua New Guinea is centered on three main priorities areas. Enhancing equitable, productive, and sustainable natural resource management through improved capacity to monitor, plan, and manage forest and trees and plants sustainably. Mr. Mandal further emphasized on how climate change is affecting the food security of PNG and how the Sago pilot project is aimed at mitigating this. The strengthening resilience of food security and nutrition through strengthening the decision-making <coughs> process to improve the resilience of food systems by ensuring food and nutrition security improved planning and delivery of food security support services and greater gender equality and women's empowerment in agriculture to enhance child nutrition and family food security. This Sago Nursery and Processing Pilot Project did not take place overnight. FAO has been working in collaboration with researchers from the Nagoya University in Japan as explained by Mr. Mandal. FAO, in collaboration with Tokai National Higher Education Research System at Nagoya University of Japan, had been pursuing to commercialize Sago research starts for the consumption by wider consumer, consumer nationally and globally. This project to enhance food security and combining, combining Climate change through the value adding Sago Palm is funded by FAO under technical cooperation program. FAO is partnering with Nagoya University to carry out research into improved method of Sago cultivation, that is multiplication of Sago seedlings from seeds, improved processing, technique by, techniques by mechanical rasping, and higher short start yield and value Dr. Hiroshi Ehara from the Tokai National Higher Education and Research System from the Nagoya University in Japan was also present to witness the launching of the project as he explains how long it took for them to work in partnership with FAO and the locals to finally see the launching of the project. Almost 10 years ago, uh, FAO as a Pacific Regional Office, uh, kindly invited us, the representative from the, each country in Asia Pacific, 
to establish the Seigo network for Asia and Pacific. It took time, patience, effort, and determination from all stakeholders in carrying out research into the types of sago palms the locals have and how best to cultivate this for a better yield, which will benefit the people in the years to come. The project that the FAO is involved here in Isipik is with regard to you know the, the global pandemic and war in Ukraine, there's food shortage, food crisis, and so, and including climate change, um, there's food shortage, and it, it impact on the food security. So FAO very much is involved in uh, addressing food security. And so the project here we, uh, in, in East Sipik, uh, we're managing a, a project to enhance the food security and combat climate change through upscaling of sago palm. Welcome back to A Closer Look. Food insecurity is a concern not only for Papua New Guinea, but the rest of the world. This sago nursery and processing pilot project is aimed at ensuring that the issues of climate change and food insecurity are addressed. Sago being one of the staple foods, especially in the coastal areas of Papua New Guinea, its sustainability is vital. The Sago Nursery and Processing Pilot Project is also aimed at developing new methods of cultivation and management of sago. Dr. Keith Galgal, the National Agribusiness Advisor for FAO in PNG, highlighted this. The sago palms that we have and now people harvesting and processing starts out of a grown many, many years ago, cultivated by our forefathers in many parts. Some people are realizing that they need to grow new sago palms, so they're growing new, but, but others are just harvesting from what has been grown, cultivated by their uh, forefathers, the ancestors, the grandfathers, the grandparents, all from the wild that has been there. So the message I'm telling the people now is that you have not grown sago. Dr. Galga went on to elaborate that with the increased demand for food due to the increasing population, sago palms are depleting as people keep cutting them down for food without planting new ones. This is typical where they eat sago all the time. Uh, some parts of the province they eat sago for breakfast, sago for lunch, sago for dinner. So with increasing population, the consumption increase. So the harvesting rate of the natural sago palm is increasing, meaning that there is decline in the, the number of or the pop, sago population, as well as decline in the yield as well, because in 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 the old days, our grandparents used to have a sago when it's ready. And they know when it's ready. When sago palm is ready, it produces the fluorescence, the flower heads. That shows that starts accumulation is now ready in the trunk of the sago palm. Then you can cut and you can make enough sago, extract enough starts. But nowadays, uh, people are cutting down sago very young. And there's no much starts accumulated in the sago trunk. So the harvesting and the processing, the yield is very low, which means that we must uh, address this issue. We must address this food security issue, and that we must now plant sago for tomorrow. Dr. Galgal went on to explain some of the health benefits of sago. Sago is, is, is a starch that is, is produced from sago palm trees. And um, nutritionally, um, sago starts has got some nutritional benefit uh, than the um, norm, uh, common flour that we get from wheat and barley. Sago, because it's from the palm, is gluten-free. There are, are people who are gluten intolerant. 
they're allergic to gluten um, uh, from grain. And so uh, sago is gluten-free and it's, it's a starch and uh, it, 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 it prevents uh, many uh, allergic uh, problems that people have. So now people have realized in the world, people realize that sago is an alternate starch to wheat and barley and corn starch. But that co grain starch contain gluten. So sago is an alternate starch. With research projects being carried out by various researchers on the potential of sago, people throughout the world are now consuming it. Throughout the world, people realize that the uh, people now, population consuming sago are increasing. For example, in Japan, a non uh, sago eating uh, country, the number of people eating sago are now increasing because of its health benefits. Uh, uh, people become more health conscious. Sago has also got an, um, uh, a good uh, binding affinity where you binds, you can with other ingredients can bind sago together. And when you cook sago, the other good thing is that sago, when you cook it, it, it releases the energy. It dissolves in the stomach slowly. It's a slow release energy. So it sustains uh, and it doesn't get dissolved into. So it's good for uh, patients or people uh, or diabetic people or diabetic patients so that it releases sugar slowly into the bloodstream so you don't have that that spike in glucose quickly and you and, and you know the symptoms that faced by you know uh, 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 diabetic patients so sago has got um, health benefits to it sago is a crop that can be utilized to its full potential as outlined by dr gal gal here in papua new guinea uh, we can uh, minimize or mitigate food, food security problem by promoting our local or traditional starch. Uh, for example, sago. We can make flour from sago. So, and really, in the long run, we want to see that if we can process sago flour and have it on the shelf. That's the ultimate. And if we can attract investors to invest into, in, into sago plantation and sago processing uh, take on as, as, um, as, 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 an, as an enterprise and, and develop the business would be good. It's a long term. So we're starting small and, and also one of the aim is to, to develop the value chain for the sago so that we have information about sago, the cost of production, the, the process, processing methods, and all that, so that we and then and, and the packaging methods, so that, that we can we can um, and, uh, invite or encourage or promote investors to invest into uh, commercial uh, planting of sago and processing of sago. So that's the that's the long term objective. You're watching a closer look. The traditional way of rasping sago is a tiresome task that people go through. The sago processing machine is seen as a lifesaver that will cut down on the amount of time people spend in making sago for consumption. The sago processing machine was brought over from Indonesia and a demonstration was done at the Moim village. The process of sago making is long and tiresome, especially when it comes to using the traditional method of rasping sago. The cut down of the time by uh, introducing new methods and new technologies, for example, me mechanical processing of sago, sago rasping. So you cut down, you can process one sago trunk uh, very quickly, rather than spending two, three days of of scraping, pounding, and, and so you need to mechanically to process one trunk in one day or in half a day or in one, two hours so that you extract. And also when you extract it, you will also make it so that you get enough, you know, you, you have recovery rate is, is good that you, you, you make enough starts. Um, traditionally, when they don't do the pounding properly or rasping properly, 
uh, the starch is locked in the fiber of the sago pit. If you do not break the, uh, the fiber into smaller pieces to release the starch, then the starch is still locked in the fiber. For that, for that reason, you, you're making about 60, 70 percent uh, sago starch from one where you should be having maybe 80 to 90 percent extraction rate. So you have enough. You spend less time to make more sago. So that's the reason why we, uh, FAO is involved in this project with a community here in WeWek, in, uh, out in the uh, east coast of WeWek called Moim Village. Uh, since 2020, and uh, our partner from Japan is doing research in um, uh, cultivating sago, uh, germinating sago seeds, producing sago uh, seedlings in the nursery, and increased production. The Food and Agriculture Organization, upon carrying out the sago nursery and processing pilot project at Moim Village, did a demonstration on the new method of sago processing. A new rasping machine was specifically designed and made for this project in Indonesia and was brought to Moim village. The people saw through the demonstration of how easy sago making can be with this machine. Also present at the launching was the Acting Secretary for the Department of Agriculture and Livestock, Dr. Nelson Simbikan. He spoke on the government prioritizing agriculture in PNG. For the Department of Agriculture, with the government of James Marape, uh, Russo Marape government today, has put priority in the agriculture sector. And for the first time in the history, of our country, our government has put a huge amount of money to develop agriculture now and going forward. For this year alone, the government has budgeted about approximately one billion kina. It has treated the agriculture sector as an economic sector that will drive economic independence for our country. Although we have political independence, but now we are gearing and moving forward to gain economic independence. And the SEGO project that is started now is an aspiration of the government that you will look to support and promote. Dr. Simbikan went on to point out that PNG is a major importer of food. However, the COVID pandemic proved that Papua New Guineans are resilient people who can survive on what we have planted and grown in country. Our country has been importing a lot of food into the country, and usually rice, flour, noodles, cooking oil, and all these things. We have a huge import bill, and a huge, huge import bill that is always putting a pressure on our resources allocated to support our people. The question comes back, what do we have that we can use to survive? In the pandemic period of COVID-19 and 2020, one thing for sure that came out clear to Papua New Guineans is that while the restriction was in place, a lot of you people went back to what you can survive on. You had food in your gardens. People returned back to what they know best to survive. And that was you went back to your sago, you went back to your yam, you went back to your banana, you went back to your taro. And these are some of the things that we have evolved with. No one will take it away from us. When it comes to pandemic and situations, We'll always go back to what we know best, how we can survive. Downstream processing is something that the government is pushing for in the country. And Dr. Simbiken elaborated that the government stands ready to support through the Department of Agriculture and Livestock. This project that we are now launching, combating food insecurity or enhancing food security,
and combating climate change through downstream processing of sago. It is a project the government is looking at. The priority of the government is to making sure whatever we produce in the country have a downstream processing aspect to it. And government has funded this year in its budget downstream processing of all our commodity crops, including our food crops in the country, to making sure they have a better self life and they making sure that they added value to some of our commodity crops and food that we have. And that's all we have for this episode of A Closer Look. Join us same time next week for another episode. Until then, thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.